Uh, now, let's just take a look at what the guard is and, and uh, what some of the, the common goals will be. And potentially, I mentioned that it relates to some other things and, and we'll take a brief look at that. So it, it is a, is it a guard? It's a guard that you're gonna, it requires uh, Kyle's arm to be around my waist. That, that, is the, that is the requirement that you must have to have this guard. So the, his arm is gonna be wrapped around my waist. I'll, I'll be on my side. We're gonna take a look at just the real meat and potatoes of, of how we lock up the guard or what it is. The actual guard had a couple stages. It had two main stages. It had one where we overwrap our, our leg and my, my, my right hand in this case held his trap, uh, my training partner's trap um, or slash shoulder. And then the stage two was it evolved to a frame and, and that's where the current uh, guard lies. Although I, I, I tend to use this quite a bit um, but this is essentially what, what the guard is. It's an overwrapping of my leg with a hand on the trap or a frame. And we'll, we're really going to talk a lot more in detail about why, um, why those things exist. But let me explain why stage one was a hand on the trap. How the, how the hell did this guard even get made? Um, uh, so I, I saw a guy, uh, and many of you might know this story. So if you do, fast forward to this, please. But I saw a guy named Nino Shembri. He came to the school, um, a very talented young man, a black belt under Henzo, um, uh, compete and train as, as well. And he was extremely flexible. He would bring his foot to his face and omoplata pretty much everybody that I saw him train with and, and compete against. Um, and he had massive success with this. Well, uh, back in that day, I had pretty good flexibility that way too. So I, I had some success pulling my foot to my face and then just presenting omoplata as, as an option based on fl mere flexibility. Um, what changed for me was we had a fight training day. Um, Adrio Gracie was uh, preparing for an MMA fight and uh, uh, a couple of the guys had tank tops on. So the shoulders were completely exposed. So of course, as we started to train, the sweat started to, to, to intensify. And what used to work of me pulling my, my foot to my face, all of a sudden these guys were standing up and getting out of Um And so I wrapped my uh, arm around uh, my leg and held my, tra my training partner at that time's trap. And, and when he tried to pull up and out, of course, my hand stopped that. And I was able to secure uh, an omoplata. So if you can imagine, because there's a rebound effect, and, and so if you can imagine, I had had this position where we were here, and I I used to hey say I had all this flexibility, and I would pull my foot up over and omoplata. I'm, I'm sure many of you have seen this scenario, and and it's all good, but but I, I had no general concern with anything except pulling my leg over his head. Well, if you have no general concern with anything, there is nothing stopping someone from keeping their head relatively over you. So if you're extremely flexible and you can bring your foot in front of your face, well then you can score a Maplata. But you can imagine if I had shorts on and he has a sweaty shoulder, that it kind of just brings his body to the ceiling, lifts up, it, that's exactly what would happen. And so I was left with, Hey, uh, this training partner was only the same level as me. It wasn't, he wasn't more experienced than me in this position. And Omar Plata was working so well before. Well, all of a sudden sweat completely annihilated my, 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 my game. So it just happened to be by accident that he said, Hey, wait a minute, his arm is slipping. So in this position, it's not a far stretch to imagine if you held the arm that when he tried to pull up and out, he pulled up. It snaps down with a rebound, and then I was able to get an omoplata out of it. So I said, "Hey, hey rock on! We got, we got, a, we got a new, new move. It works again. It's just by putting my hand under my leg." Well, then that works for quite some time. That worked for quite some time until my training partners started to realize. I can move a little bit like that. Yeah, perfect. Uh, that if their head, if all he did was drive his head into my right shoulder and flatten me out, all of a sudden, my guard is, I'm stuck again. Even if I'm, even if I'm flexible, I, guys could just stall me out. Um, 
and I, I, I lost all my attacks, or the majority of my attacks. And I felt like I was working so hard to get an omoplata. And again, if I pull the foot in front of the face and they're right in, in, in touch with me, one or two jerks, it, I might be able to get a quick omoplata, but then I'm out of position and then guys start killing my guard again. So uh, what I quickly found out that was if, if I put a frame in front of their head, that stopped that drive. So if I had this and I, the current problem was guys are moving their head to this shoulder. Well, if I could create some sort of frame, which just happened uh, by happenstance, that then when he drove in, it changed it, changed everything. Okay, it didn't allow his head uh, to move over my shoulder, and then all the attacks started to happen. Uh, now let me say there's a caveat to this. Uh, I was already a blue belt at this time, and uh, I was, it was around 98, 99. I was training every single day for hours and hours a day. I had already learned how to do the very basic guard with an overhook and get your knees in and what we now call clamp guard, and then go into what we now call trap triangle and, and attack from close guard scenario based on an overhook because we had many, many guys fighting in MMA or going into MMA so overhooking and getting that knee, my knee into this gap was a big deal. This was a big deal in our academy at the time because people were fighting. So one of the positions that, uh, that we would score in general was this position where I'm holding my far shin, his arm is down by my, my hip and it's a nice punching position and then it's nice to go into triangles and different things like this. This is something that I already had in my arsenal. So when the frame came on, it, it, it related directly into that situation, which we're gonna carry into that later. And we'll look at the details of the overhook guard and getting into clamp and so forth and so on. But that, that's why the frame, I think, made so much sense to me early on, is that, oh, this is, this is just another way to get to Trap triangle to get to Umaplata, to get to the arm lock on the far side, um, uh, which might be unique because of the frame, uh, more unique than the overhook. I think the far arm lock is added, intensified when you have a frame. We'll look at that in a minute. But, but that was the general premises. Uh, I, I will say that uh, techniques are made all the time. Um, in my opinion, uh, they're, they're often not, I, I say this was a mistake, it wasn't a mistake, it was, it was made by necessity uh, because necessity, uh, they say necessity is the mother of invention so, and, and this is true for this, I had to hold my, my, the trap under my leg or else this would have kept sledding out. I had to create a frame because my opponent was or my train partner was driving into my shoulder um, and then all these things uh, started to play into what created this small little system. And uh, I'm gonna share that with you and we're gonna share also again uh, what the overhook and the clamp guard are uh, in the, in the, in the subsequent, subsequent videos.